Anakin's heart beated swiftly. He moved through the dense jungle of Dathomir with grace and with ease, but with great effort. Every step he took, he could feel himself growing more and more weary. But Anakin refused to stop. He could feel as if the very power of the planet itself was fighting against him. Every time he traversed through the jungles, he would have similar thoughts. If I am so powerful, the chosen one, why is the simple task of running through this jungle so difficult? He knew why it was difficult, but he held himself to such a high standard that this question repeated in his mind nonetheless. He had just completed another grueling training session under Mother Towson, somebody that he considered to be his second master. It had been nearly 10 years since Qui-Gon Jinn and Anakin had made the planet of Dathomir their home. He had somewhat admittedly grown to love the planet. It was his home, and it was the place where he could hone his craft, and his goal to become the most powerful force wielder that had ever lived. He remembered the day years ago when Mother Talzin and Qui-Gon Jinn had counseled with one another. Anakin knew that Mother Talzin despised the Jedi, but he also knew that she hated the Sith something his own master, Qui-Gon Jinn, was fully aware of. He remembered that day so vividly, how Qui-Gon Jinn was completely transparent with the Night Sister leader. He remembered his words as he ran through the jungle. This young boy is the chosen one that is prophesied to destroy the Sith. I am a Jedi, a Knight of the Order, and because of that, I lack certain abilities to train this young boy properly. You, on the other hand, the Great Mother Talzin, versed in ways beyond even the dark side of the Force, in methods you refer to as magic. Anakin realized it was only because he was the chosen one that Mother Talzin had agreed to assist in his training to begin with. He knew his place, but he also knew that the Night Sisters were dangerous. Mother Talzin little cared for Skywalker, and he knew it. It didn't matter though, he had his master. Anakin had known Talzin for over a decade now, and her heart had still not softened to him. He remembered the training that he had undergone just an hour earlier, blindfolded and forced to battle Rancor's native to the planet. The catch, he could not use his lightsaber, and he could not use the Force, only what the Night Sisters again called this magic. He remembered his master Qui-Gon Jinn telling him quite clearly why he needed to learn such abilities, abilities of the dark side of the Force that the Sith, his greatest enemy, the enemy that he would one day destroy, were completely unfamiliar with. Mysteries of the dark side that not even this great Sith Emperor that was looming in the shadows knew. All of this moved through the mind of the young Skywalker, with every step he took through the dense jungle of Dathomir. Qui-Gon Jinn had ordered the young Anakin Skywalker to solely run through the dense jungle of Dathomir to his lesson every week with Mother Talzin, and then run back, with this exercise being a lesson in itself. Anakin could feel his surroundings. He understood the planet. Beyond Talzin's teachings, Qui-Gon had taught him a lot as well. The art of lightsaber combat. The thought of his lightsaber stuck in his mind. Anakin's pace slowed for a moment as he looked down at his hilt. The hilt was nothing luxurious or fancy, crafted from scrap metal that his master and him had discovered from fallen spaceships years earlier. What was within this lightsaber, though, held great significance to Skywalker. He ignited the blade as fire, a yellow fire, emitted from the shroud. This would help light Anakin's way home. Flipping the blade around to reverse in his hand, Anakin ignited the second emitter shroud. Again, yellow fire spat from the opposite end of the lightsaber. Qui-Gon Jinn had only told Anakin the rumors of the Sith that he had once encountered on Naboo and Tatooine years earlier. Anakin was still a young boy then, but he still vividly sensed the presence of this being, this Sith warrior the only Sith Lord Anakin had ever encountered. As Skywalker picked the pace up yet again, he used his lightsaber to cut through the dense jungle of Dathomir. He was close now. He could sense the calmness of his master. His pace increased. He was excited to finally get home. Exiting the brush, he finally saw the small hut that he and his master resided in and trained within for so long. This time, though, Anakin felt something different. The calm nature of his master, his presence in the Force, was somewhat disturbed. Qui-Gon was with in the hut, but Anakin could tell immediately that something was wrong. Slowly, Anakin entered. Master Qui-Gon was sitting at a table, a hologram placed before him. Anakin 
can instantly recognize the figure on the hologram. It was Dooku. He didn't even need to see the face of the Count. His proud stature instantly gave him away. Qui-Gon, the hologram repeated, Your departure of the Jedi Order has left ripples. None have forgotten that decision you made. Many of the Knights of the Order have risen up, believing it treasonous that Grandmaster Yoda and Mace Windu would make the decision to turn away the Chosen One of the Jedi. I myself have seen this great flaw in their philosophy, and because of that, have led this large sect of the Jedi Order away from the teachings of the more conventional Order. We have found our way to my homeworld of Sereno, where I have reclaimed my title, and we await your response. We have been reaching out for years now, and still, nothing, Master Qui-Gon. Please, old friend, you do not want us to find you first. I implore you, we can help one another. The might of the Chosen One, and now a new Order, my Order, we would be unstoppable. The Sith would be no more, and we could begin a new Order of Jedi. A right order. I await your response, old friend. But know that my patience runs thin. We have been involved in this dance far too long. Qui-Gon stopped the recording, looked up, and smiled. Anakin could tell, though, that the message had troubled his master. Anakin was aware that Dooku had been looking for them for, again, years, just as he had said within the recording. He was unaware, though, the size of Dooku's new order. To Anakin's knowledge prior, he had only thought that Dooku had taken a select few students when he departed the order. Based on the look of Qui-Gon Jinn's face, though, Anakin knew that his numbers were growing. A quick side note here, guys, as we have a lot to unpack in this part, too. A big reason I think Qui-Gon Jinn would have selected Dathomir as a planet to bring Anakin to was because of the Night Sisters themselves. I think that it would be really wise for Qui-Gon Jinn to have Anakin learn the ways of magic, a dark side philosophy that's not quite the dark side of the Force that the Sith uses. It would definitely be a great weapon to use against the Sith and other Force wielders, and also something that's not quite as alluring as the dark side of the Force itself. It would familiarize Anakin, the Chosen One, with the dark side and more dark side abilities without risking his total corruption. It shows him the dark side of the Force, but in a different form, a less dangerous form, while at the same time obviously training with Qui-Gon Jinn, a fully formed Jedi Master. I also think at this point in time that Sidious would continue to train Darth Maul, but rest assured Sidious as well has his plans with Dooku and this new, smaller sect of the Jedi Order that has departed after Anakin and Jinn departed Coruscant, which is something else I believed would have happened. I think many Jedi would be fearful of the the Jedi Council themselves turning away the Chosen One, the one that would bring balance to the Force and destroy the Sith. And I do not think that this decision would sit well with maybe even the majority of the Jedi Order, leading to many members of the Jedi Order departing. Also, I did think that it would look really cool to give Anakin Skywalker a double-bladed yellow lightsaber. It would sort of express his idea of balance, and I think it's a fun way to take the character and his weapon. Again, this is a very different Anakin Skywalker. He's somebody that hasn't shied away from the powers of the dark side of the Force. He knows his importance, but with Qui-Gon Jinn, he's also less arrogant. This is the Skywalker that we would encounter around the time of Attack of the Clones, but he's also far more powerful than he is in regular Star Wars continuity. He's been trained in the ways of the Night Sisters as well as the ways of a Jedi. He's a different being entirely and is not a Jedi. Going back to the group that I believe would depart the Jedi Order though, I do think Dooku would arise as a new Grand Master of a new Force-based order. Qui-Gon Jinn's eyes would flash back to the hologram and back to Anakin, the smile leaving his face. Anakin had not moved since he had entered the hut, his eyes fixated on the form of Dooku frozen in the hologram. My young apprentice, Qui-Gon says calmly, this message was received several weeks ago. Anakin's eyes flashed to attention. Qui-Gon stood, walked over to Anakin, and placed his arm on his shoulder. Dooku will be here soon. I can sense it. He has found where we are. What are we going to do, Master? Anakin responds worriedly. Our time on Dathomir has come to an end, but we will not run. You are about to face your greatest test, my young apprentice. Dooku is a powerful wielder of the Force. Now, I fear, a powerful wielder of the dark side of the Force. And he has likely taught these students many of these abilities. We will prepare Anakin. We will meet him first with diplomacy. But if things escalate, I have sent a message to an old friend of mine my former Padawan Obi-Wan Kenobi, a faithful member of the Jedi Order, holding strong. If things turn sour this day with Dooku, you will go to him. 
back to the Jedi. They will likely not accept you as one of them, as you are not one of them. You are something new. But they will protect you. Protect you until you no longer require it. A tremor slowly moved through the force. Anakin could feel it so potently. The room around him seemed to darken slightly. He is here. Qui-Gon says calmly to Skywalker. Subtly using the force, Qui-Gon Jinn grabs his lightsaber, attaching it to his belt, and then throwing a robe over it. You will stay here, my young apprentice, until the time is right. The dense jungle around the hut begins to shake as Anakin peers out the window. A massive shuttle is descending upon their home. He knows who's within it, but what worries him is he doesn't know who else is within it. The shuttle crashes before the hut with a thud. Not a moment passes, as the image seen on the holocron is now physically before Qui-Gon and Anakin, just feet from their home. Slowly, more dark-robed figures exit behind Dooku. Qui-Gon, my old friend, Dooku shouts. His voice sounds friendly, but Qui-Gon and Anakin know it's a warning. To his surprise though, Qui-Gon Jinn confidently exits their home, using the force to subtly close the door behind him. My old friend, Qui-Gon responds. The two men embrace one another. I see you have made good use of your time, Master Dooku, Qui-Gon says with a smile. The extravagant shuttle placed behind him his followers placed behind him. And you, my former apprentice, humble as ever. Dooku responds as he slowly gestures towards the hut. There's a brief pause. Dooku, Qui-Gon says confidently, the boy is safe with me, trained here. Please, leave us be. Dooku scowls. When I made my way to this wretched planet, I knew pleasantries would disperse eventually. You have been gone for a long time, Qui-Gon. I did not expect them to end this quickly. I have much to show the boy. Prophecies are old. Prophecies can be useless. They can mean nothing. Let me simply speak with him. I have made powerful moves. Powerful friends since your time in exile, Qui-Gon. Friends, I believe, potentially more powerful than the supposed chosen one. I did not come here as an enemy, my old friend. I came here with a proposition. The time of the Jedi is coming to an end. It is the twilight of their era. A new era will soon begin. An era of peace and an era of order. You have no idea the reaches this new order is capable of. Dooku, Qui-Gon Jinn stops the count mid-sentence, reaching towards his belt. It is time for you to leave. No, Qui-Gon, Dooku responds with a grimace. It is time for your final lesson. I'm going to go ahead and bring part two here to a close, but again, I want to offer a brief explanation where I'm taking this story. I think if both Dooku and Qui-Gon Jinn were alive at the same time, a power struggle would form between the two of them over Skywalker. I don't think Dooku would be immediately driven into the arms of the open Sith, but I do think it would come eventually, and I think it would then become his ultimate goal to hunt down Anakin Skywalker and his former apprentice. I've also always loved the idea of a rivalry forming between Qui-Gon Jinn and Dooku two aged Jedi Masters, both with different goals concerning the Chosen One and where his life should lead. Anyway though, my friends, I would love to hear your thoughts on where this story is going. We absolutely smashed the light goal of part one. So this time, I will come out with part three of what if Qui-Gon Jinn trained Anakin Skywalker very soon if this video can reach 8,000 likes. The last video is currently sitting at 14,000 likes and I cannot thank you guys enough. As always, my friends, may the Force be with you and have a great day. Okay.